Great having Ian Heinisch back here on the program. He's going to be back in action at UFC Fight Night on July 24th. Ian, how's it going? Oh, it's going good, man. It's uh, just been in a real transition time, but, you know, we're we're looking to close on a house this week, and we're excited to have a home base for the first time in over a year. So it'll be exciting. Yeah, let's start there. We might as well. Uh, what made you decide on moving to Florida and making Sanford MMA as your home base? Um, you know, I just came down here and uh, trained with the guys for a month just to try it out and, you know, just felt the real team atmosphere. Uh, the coaches are great. All the wrestling coaches, Greg, Kami, uh, Henry, and, and um, you know, it, it just it, it fit my lifestyle, man, in and outside of the gym. You know, outside we had the beach right there and, um, you know, it's warm weather and just the freedom down here in Florida, especially when things are more locked up, you know, they were – they were away with the mask and all that. And, and, you know, we just, we agreed with all that. So it seemed like the perfect fit. Uh, I got to ask, cause I brought it up to him as well. Uh, what was it like seeing Brendan Allen there? Cause I know you were cool with him, but I know he had some issues or whatever, but how was it now that you guys are teammates? Cause you guys are supposed to fight each other. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, it was some weird vibes in the beginning, but uh, you know, He's grown on me. I've grown on him. And, uh, you know, we actually got some good work in today. We sparred today. And, uh, yeah, I think it's mostly put to bed. It's, you know, at the end of the day, man, I don't know. He didn't know me. And I didn't know him. And, you know, it's just business, really. And uh, now we're, you know, we're training together. We're helping each other get better. We want to see each other win fights. So, I mean, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of good middleweights at, at that gym as well. Um, we'll. We'll talk a little bit about camp in a sec. But before we get to the matchup, you got married, man. Congrats. How did the wedding go? I saw there was a private jet. Like, like what, what happened there? It seemed oh, like everything yeah. went well. Yeah, no, it was amazing, man. It was picture perfect. We, we had the wedding at my wife's ranch um, in Nebraska. And, yeah, and I was in Colorado uh, getting my suit and stuff like that. And one of my buddies from church uh, actually flew me on his private plane right out there to the ranch basically and uh yeah man it was it was it was an amazing experience and a great celebration with all the family and friends and a good little break from training while uh before i dove right back into camp so you knew about the fight before the wedding like how did that all work out logistically yeah so when i first moved to florida i i was healthy i was ready to go you know i just fought gaslam and obviously didn't go my way and i was hungry and i was just in good shape and didn't have any serious injuries and I was like man I want to fight in April they offered me the Jacare fight I turned it down because I was wanting to fight like fast you know and um but then I got to the gym and Henry was like hey man acclimate a little like you know take your time we want to we want to work on some stuff with you fix some things and I totally agreed with it and you know I trust I trusting my coaching and, and uh so we pushed that fight back. I was looking for a short notice in May. You know, Jacare got that. It would have been perfect May 15th because I would have been got to fight him before the wedding. But um, we were ready for a short notice. It didn't happen, but it just it just gave me time to get used to my training partners, my coaching, and just acclimate a little bit to more to Florida and really just grow and, and improve myself. That's interesting. So, I mean, had the wedding not taken place or had that date not been in there, you likely would have fought Jacare. Like, tell me how that came together. You must have felt pretty good that the UFC wanted you to fight him because he's a legend. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I love the matchup. I was just hoping he could fight in April and he wasn't um, he wasn't willing to, to do that. And um, yeah, and then I was bummed because when I like, after I talked to Henry, he's like, no, man, do something in like May. And then I was like, Wait, just kidding. We'll take that fight. We want it. And, uh, you know, he already had an opponent, Andre Munez, who I was supposed to fight before the pandemic. And, uh, and yeah, and so we were just on standby for a short notice. If any of those guys got sick or anything happened, I was I was ready to stop uh, to jump in, especially fighting in front of a crowd. I, I'm, I'm excited to do that. I was at the Jacksonville fights and the energy was insane. And uh, I, I would, you know, I'm so excited to hopefully fight in front of a crowd soon. I don't think this fight is going to be that way, but maybe it'll change. We never know. And, um, and yeah, so we were just on standby and then obviously we couldn't take something in early June or middle June cause the wedding and I wanted to be able to enjoy myself and July 24th just worked out perfect. Opponents great. And we're ready to roll. Excellent. And sorry, just one more thing. So you said, so sorry, the, the Jacare fight was supposed to be in April or you wanted it in April. What was the original date he wanted? What was the conflict there? Um, it was like late May. They were okay. Um, it turned out to be mid-May and 
um, I would have totally took that, but I just didn't know the situation. I hadn't gone to Sanford yet. I hadn't talked to him. I see. It was a train. Okay. That makes sense. So it wasn't yeah. necessarily the wedding. It was, it was more the, the moving thing, like trying to figure out where you, cause you needed somewhere to train, right? You can just step into a fight and take on a jock ray, right? Like nothing. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was training in Denver, but I knew I was going to come to Florida after and, and just try it out. I knew I really wanted to improve my wrestling, especially after the Gastelum fight. Um, you know, I felt like I, my striking was right there with him. I felt like I was even getting the better on my feet and, you know, and I feel he surprised me with how much wrestling he did. And, um, you know, and, and I want, it's something I want to go back to is my roots, you know? So I knew Greg Jones, uh, call me down here and I knew all the good wrestlers and, you know, I knew I needed to get in this room and I came down here and that's when I got the news that I, you know, I need to train for a little while before I just step in a fight and I agreed and, uh, here we are. Let's talk about your opponent here. Nine and three record. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Um, you know, I don't know much, man. And at this point, you know, I'm just planning on stepping into the cage, take care of business, just getting back to my winning ways, getting back to a win streak. Uh, you know, I honestly don't even really know how to say his name. Um, so when you said it, uh, you know, I, I'm just not looking into it, man. I'm just really just focused on improving and just and just showing up. Uh, one of my teammates, Phil Hawes, fought him two fights ago and beat him so you know i picked up a few pointers from phil and um but you know i i'm not doing like the specialty training like i did for gas i'm watching all this tape i'm just gonna just fight all these different bodies in the gym and just be ready for anything someone throws at you because a good fighter is going to change every fight so i plan on fighting good fighters so i just got to be ready for anything that can happen in there and not so focused on one style or um you know one discipline yeah, which is smart anyways. The opponent could switch up. There's a lot of different things that could happen, right? So you might prepare for one guy and then they, you know, they, they flip the switch, so to speak. Um, it's probably easier for the camp as well because, right, Henry and the other coaches, they've already prepared for this opponent, not just Phil, but the coaches as well, I'm assuming. Yeah, exactly. They've, uh, they've already had a game plan for him and talking to Phil on just how the fight went. I obviously watched that fight and, uh, you know, saw the, some of the mistakes. And it was cool, too, because Henry – has actually, uh, when I fought Brunson, I was supposed to fight Brendan Allen, um, you know, he, he knew what kind of fighter I was. So obviously he's, he knew where my holes were. So he's been working on those holes and getting me, um, you know, cleaning some stuff up. So it was cool to have him already know so much about me even before I came to the gym. So when I finally came, um, you know, he didn't need to, he already knew exactly what I needed to work on. So that, that was cool for me. There's a ton of middleweights at uh, Sanford, like I mentioned. Who are some of the main guys you work, uh, get to work with? We talked about Phil Huss. Uh You just trained with Brandon Allen this morning. Who else are you getting to work with? Um, Greg. Uh, he just got in the UFC from LFA. Oh, Gregory Rodriguez. Greg, yeah, the guy who just won. Yeah, yeah. Gregory LFA Rodriguez. Guy. I trained with him a lot. Uh, I mean, just since I've been there, I've been training with so many people, from Anthony Rumble Johnson to... You know, I got to train a little bit with Brunson, not too much. Um, he was kind of in the, the heat of camp when I showed up. Um, and, man, I could just – there's so many people. Joe get, Schilling get to work. Is, is, is Rory McDonald down there by chance? I know he, he's got yes. his fight coming up. Yeah, because I was yeah, wondering I how mean, that would I've been that training been. with him. Yeah, I've been training with Rory. Uh, Rory's just a, a mountain of knowledge, obviously, with Nate Marquardt. Um, and I'm just trying to think that Tuco uh, – I mean, there's so many guys there, man. For if sure. you show me the list, I'd be like, boom, boom, boom. But I mean, that's the cool thing, you know. This this gym, you got to be on point every day because you're gonna you're not getting any easy training partners. Like every every round, you're like, wow, this guy's a name. This guy's like, he he's he's somebody and he's good and he's gonna push me. But it's also the atmosphere and no one's trying to break each other down. We're all trying to lift each other up. The the goal has been reached many times at Samford of getting the belt and everyone just wants to elevate each other, not step on each other to get to that. Um, now the weight cut, I always ask you this, are, are you on the non sugar again? What, what's the deal with that? Yeah. I mean, I've, you know, I've kind of just really made it a lifestyle. Just tried to, you know, I mean, I don't look so deep into like, Hey, there can't be one gram of sugar in this. It's just more, now it's just become a lifestyle. Dessert is usually fruit. And if on the occasion when it's not, it's, uh, you know, like a paleo or a keto dessert, like some brownies with some like non-dairy, non-sugar added ice cream, stuff like that. Um, and it tastes great to me. And, it, and, it, and you know, I can feel the difference. It doesn't hurt me. And then always after a fight, I just kind of wing it because usually we're traveling right and you can't really be that disciplined so i just i give myself one week after a fight to just go crazy but other than that man it's just a lifestyle of 
uh, no rot refined sugar, no processed food, and been eating a lot more fish out here because I've been fishing a lot. Oh yeah, you getting out on the boat, yeah. or you just go to the go down there and buy fish? Uh, no, no, I don't buy fish. I, I only eat what I catch. So it's oh like, cool, okay. Uh, I I go out on the pier and um, you know I'm fishing off there. We I go out on this reef boat. I charter boats sometimes. Uh, someday hopefully have my own boat and uh i love fishing man and that's why i'm ready for that the U, the ufc fishing tournament so sign me up whenever they're doing it and uh i'll be like the the underdog in there and i'll i'll probably end up winning it interesting because there's a lot of fishermen in the ufc uh, right gregor gillespie being one of the most notable one bryce mitchell yeah. so you're in good company i think that's a good idea you should organize that so yeah there you go um who's gonna be in your corner for this fight um, you know, I just, just kind of was deciding that today, um, uh, um, obviously Henry and my boxing coach, um, Jacob Ramos and probably one of my teammates, um, just to have a body there. You know, I was going to have my dad there, but he, I think it's going to be at the apex and it's going to be the quarantine thing. And just, uh, yeah, he, I, I, he's gotta be in my corner sometime for a win, but, um, you know, I feel like this, I just need to go take care of business and, uh, you know, they're going to do the whole lockdown thing. And um, so, you know, I, I'm waiting for, like, it to really open up or even fight nights or um, – f- I mean, I miss the whole fight week. I miss everything about it, man. You're telling it's, me, man. I can't even go to the States right now. So it's <laughs> – uh, you know, it's – Yeah. Nice, so. How's Canada? I mean, you're pretty locked down, right? Depends on the province. Like where I am right now in Vancouver, it, or in British Columbia, I should say, it's not that bad. Like yeah. I can still go to the gym. We can have indoor dining. Like I went out for you know breakfast with my grandparents the other day. Like it's fine there, but it's just going to the U.S. It's such a nightmare with the you know back and forth and quarantining and all that. Like because I got a young one, it's yeah. just too too tough for me to go and you know travel and then have to quarantine so much. It's just like I'd be away a lot. So it's yeah. uh, it's tough. So there you go. Yeah. Um, how do you see this fight playing out on July 24th? You know, honestly, like, however it plays out, it will. I, I, I know, I, I feel like, I know for sure that I'm, like, on a different level than this guy. But at the same time, everyone in the UFC is tough. I'm not underestimating anyone. And, um, you know, this should be a fight that I can walk through a guy. But, you know, I just need to go perform, man. I just need to get back to me. I think with me getting married and, and uh, you know, getting – we're closing on a house this week and we'll finally have a home base, home gym – um, and just getting a little bit of that stability right towards the end of camp is just going to boost me. And I feel like you're going to see uh, just a new chapter and a new version of me just coming out and, uh, you know, getting back to my winning ways and getting where I want to be in this division and, um, you know, eventually making my way to that title. Did you, whatever happened to that RV, were you renting it or was that one you owned? Yeah, we were renting it. And, oh, okay. And then it, and then it started snowing and going below 30. And we were like, <laughs> Which is we're not done. fun. Yeah. But in the time, it was fun. We were, you know, three months in front of the gym, and uh, it was awesome. We just trained and living there and playing basketball, and um, that was a fun time in our life. But we're definitely ready for to have stability, have our own place, our own smells, our own bed, and just situated where we can, um, you know, have this home base. So I imagine now that you're all settled and everything, are you looking to kind of get a little bit more active just because, you know, you don't have to worry about other stuff. You're sort of just focused on the fighting now that you have the home base? Yes, absolutely. That Mick knows it. Uh, my management knows it. We're ready. You know, I want to. I want to go put it together a nice win streak this year and finish it off strong. You know, I'm ready to get back to the winning ways and uh, you know start climbing in the division. I feel like I've you know been moving and doing so much. You know, now I can really focus. So um, a focused Ian and an on point Ian is is a dangerous man. So um, I'm excited for this year. Do you still keep in touch with any of your old teammates like at uh, Factory X, like I know Dustin Jacoby, oh, yeah. um, Chris Camozzi, any of those guys, Anthony Smith, do you still like keep keep in touch with them? Oh, yeah. I mean, Dustin was at my wedding. Uh, oh, was Gino, he? Oh, I didn't another... know that. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Chris, I talk to Chris all the time. Um, yeah, no, I talked to Brandon Royval. I just, you know, talked to him the other day. Yeah, I, I talked to a lot of the teammates for sure. Okay, reason I ask, because Dustin Jacoby is a huge golfer, and I've gotten into golf big time this year, so i got to know, do you golf at all? No, not a golfer, man. I'll, <laughs> Interesting, I'll, I'll okay. I'll go out on the boat fishing with you, but uh, not a golfer. Maybe later in my life I'll get into it, but at the moment i got enough going on. For sure, so just stick to fishing and, and just do that. Do any of your teammates go fishing with you, by the way? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kyle, um, he's an up-and-coming heavyweight. Um, let me see who else is... Uh, yeah, not, oh, Ong has came fishing with oh, me. Oh, is he really? Teal, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and he was like puking. It was the choppiest day ever on this small <laughs> boat. And he like, he like puked and then came back, caught a fish and then went and puked again. And everyone was like applauding him. Like, man, that's, that's gangster. That's uh, crazy. but yeah, yeah, we fish. Uh, and obviously once we get settled more, I'll fish more with some of the teammates. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. I've never, I don't think I've ever thrown up on a, on a boat and I've done a ton of boating cause I live right near the beach yeah. uh, here in, yeah, in Canada. Me too. So that, that's interesting. Yeah. Yep. Nate Marcourt also, I've been fishing with him. Good yeah. stuff. Well, uh, Ian, really appreciate the time, man. Uh, anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media? I'll give you the last word. Um, yeah, I mean, just just thank my wife for just supporting me, and you know, through all this, uh, you know, non no stability in her life, and uh, just thank you to everyone who's at my wedding, and um, yeah, to all my sponsors that are still there, have stuck with me, uh, Ramona Eldorado. I can just that's off the top of my head. Um, just always coming through uh, my old sponsors too. I don't know with illegal Pete's the pandemics hurt them a lot, but I still give them shout outs, man. I got mad love for them and uh, King apparel and uh, yeah, just, just uh, I'll put up all my sponsors today on my page and just give them some love, follow them, give them some likes and I appreciate all you guys who support me and all the ones that sponsor me.